In 2007, a Chicago storage facility owner sold off the contents of five lockers to an auctioneer for just $750. But in those lockers was a treasure trove of photography produced by an intensely private nanny out to document the world around her. Her work is now a sensation, but there are also questions about how to show work its creator never had a chance to control. WGBH News arts editor Jared Bone explains. There were moments nearly every day, especially in the 1950s and 60s, that nanny Vivian Meyer would disappear wherever she was living. In cities like New York and Chicago, she quietly photographed. Street scenes, children, herself. Hardly anyone knew. She said, I want to be the mystery woman. So uh, she, she, she rejoiced in that on some level. But she was intensely private and she had locks on her doors and wouldn't let people into her, into her room. Adding to her mystery, Meyer rarely saw her own work. That was abundantly evident in 2007. Unable to pay the rent on her storage facilities, she saw their contents, including all her photography, auctioned off. There were more than 100,000 negatives, including some 2,700 undeveloped rolls of color and black and white film. That, for a professional photographer, is hard to imagine. Uh, to not be showing your, your work publicly. Since the auction and Meyer's death shortly after, her art world stardom has rocketed as gallery owners, curators, and collectors tout her as one of the great undiscovered talents of the 20th century. The Women's Studies Research Center at Brandeis University is exhibiting a selection of Meyer's work in a new show co-curated by scholar and photographer Karen Rosenthal. What do her photographs tell us about her? Mm, there's a lot you can glean. Uh, she loved children, that's quite clear. Uh, she had tremendous empathy for their, uh, their sense of play, their curiosity, the emotional dramas that they lived with daily. She saw everybody in the society, and especially the ones that the society didn't acknowledge. She would go to the, to the south side of Chicago and photograph. Which she did with a basic Roloflex camera like this one. She was looking down into it. People didn't necessarily know what she was up to. She couldn't uh, draw these people close to her with the lens. She had to walk right into their space. The posthumous release of Meyer's work raises questions about how to consider it. It is not the artist, after all, who's decided which prints should be released, how they should look, and be produced. It is others who are creating her legacy. People say that there are, that many art, artists were made by editors or gallerists who influence what is shown, what isn't shown. She may not have selected the best images when she printed them herself. And Rosenthal says it's also too soon, especially given that only a fraction of Meyer's work has been released, to decide where the photographer should rank in the eyes of critics. She's sometimes been called a copycat or an encyclopedia of, of all the photography that was going on in the 50s, and there was tons going on in the 50s. Uh, but when I examine that, I don't see that to be the case at all. I don't know anybody who photographed children the way she did, for one thing, or did self-portraits that were as imaginative and, and interesting uh, or included so much of the world around her. Here, the pictures largely speak for themselves, even if the artist cannot. And Jared Bowen is here. Well, how did this happen? How did it take off? If she, she died two years after she sold off the contents of her locker, who made it happen? Well, I love this story. It's really, really fascinating. So basically, the contents were auctioned off, and, and three men bought the contents. And they all had one was looking for photographs of a park in Chicago, and he thought maybe these negatives would be in, in there. Basically, they were just looking at vintage photographs that they could sell on eBay. And one of them started to do that, and they started to get the images out. People were responding to it. And then one scholar intervened and said, stop selling these negatives. This woman is amazing. You, you have to realize what you have here. And then the three men got together and then they began to realize people began to evaluate her work and realize that yeah she was a really striking photographer from this time and so and now it's taken off so that there are shows there's catalogs there's a film coming out about her well, not to get technical here, but what's the copyright deal? Who, who's benefiting from this? Well, that's what makes it so interesting. It, basically, the people who have bought the negatives now own uh. the, the rights to her work. But it, what makes it such an interesting story is how she gets crafted. Because, as we said in the piece, she wasn't the one deciding what these images would be. Uh, it, there's evidence, obviously, that she was a great photographer because they're reprinting negatives like you see here just one. exactly 
as she shot them through that camera. So her frame, you see her framing, but a lot of ph ph photographers of this period would do their own cropping. They would select their own images. But of course, this is all being done posthumously by, as uh, Karen Rosenthal said to me, this is photography from the 20th century, from the 50s and 60s, that's a hybrid because it's got a 21st century viewpoint because you've got people to, to, to today who are deciding what her legacy is. So what's going to happen with this? I mean, it's, 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 it goes on tour? How does it... Well, this, for instance, is um, from the negatives of one of the people who, who bought her collection um, who's starting to market her. And so it, it's kind of also interesting because now these images, she, like you see here, <laughs> is yeah. out in the world so that you're able to, to sort of decide. I mean, as Karen Rosenthal also pointed out, only a fraction of her images have actually been produced at this point, and none, from what I can tell, none of the color images mm -hmm. have been produced. So when, when there are criticisms of her, like she's too Diane Arbus or too this or too that, you, Karen Rosenthal says you have to keep in mind that these are people who might be influenced by Diane Arbus in their own right. So they're going to look for works of artists that they like or that they already respond to. So that's what makes it so interesting. But I have to tell you, looking at it myself, I love the work. Yeah. So she was a nanny most of the time. For, for what kinds of families? And did they know what she was up to? Or? Well, she was some, uh, there are different accounts. I mean, some people describe her as Mary Poppins. Some <laughs> people say that she had a real edge to her. She was mysterious. She was dark. Phil Donahue was one of the families really? that she was a nanny for in Chicago. Uh, this is some of the kids have talked about how they would, she, she would take them out with her and when taking these photographs. But nobody knew necessarily that it was such a passion of her, in part because she never produced these images for herself. Most of it, unproduced, mm -hmm. undeveloped.